Anglers know that bass love panfish beds. Well, I used to think I had a pretty good idea of how to fish them. Well, that is until now after a recent trip to Minnesota. First off, the sheer size and scope of these panfish beds were amazing. They would go on for 20, 30, 40, 50 yards. And of course they drew in all kinds of life, including a lot of bass. As I filmed them, a couple things really stood out to me. First off, in this particular situation, rarely were the bass up and on top of these panfish beds. They would be sitting back where that gravelly bottom met that inside weed line. And then they would sit there and roam through this sparse vegetation back and forth, circling around again and again. Now, not saying that they can't get up on top of those beds or they don't ever go up there, but at least on this particular trip, I never filmed the bass one time actually up and over the panfish beds. They were in that cover closest to the beds. And this is when I noticed something that I really wanted to share with you. As I was filming the bass in this area, it became real apparent that much of the time they were looking down. I even had groups of bass, two, three, four bass within the camera frame at the same time that were all looking down. Now, of course, they'd swim through the water column like we normally see them and observe them. But then at some point they would nose down and just cover water looking at the lake bed. They were not interested in the panfish swimming around them up in the water column at all. They were 100% keyed in on what was below them. And this particular bass right here swam by the camera and had some of the roots of the vegetation actually in its mouth. We could assume that it had just gobbled up something off of the lake bed and there were still some of the weeds hanging out. Now at first I thought, oh, well maybe they're keying in on crayfish, right? Maybe there's a whole bunch of crayfish that are up here raiding these panfish beds. But as much as I tried to find them, I never filmed one crawdad at all, not whatsoever. Now not saying they aren't there and that I just didn't find them with the camera, but I didn't observe them or didn't see them. Then I thought maybe the bass were looking for recently hatched fry okay we know that fry when they leave the nest when they hatch a lot of times they instinctively will head towards cover as a matter of fact in these clips here we see hundreds of bass fry that are hanging out underneath lily pads so i thought well you know maybe these large mouth are they're looking for some panfish fry be a super easy meal there'd be a lot of them there and that would make sense that they've kind of moved into the weeds now once again not saying there was not panfish fry there but i never filmed any with the camera so i could never get a good sense of what it was that they were looking for or looking at on the bottom as they were swimming around but what I can tell you for sure is it drastically influenced the bite. My traditional go-to lure for fishing panfish beds is a swim jig. I caught zero fish on a swim jig around panfish beds on this trip. I couldn't believe it. They would swat at it once in a while or maybe just nip it a little bit, but they would never inhale it like I was used to. But as soon as I put down, I put that swim jig rod down and I picked up a bottom bouncing lure. This was a jig rig. I've had a video on it before. Basically a scaled down Jika rig, a Ned rig alteration is what it is. And the first cast, this nice fish absolutely inhaled it. And anytime I was around sunfish beds, this is what I had to do. I would put that bottom bouncing or bottom dragging presentation on. Makes for a good, good trip. Very nice bass. And I just would get bit one a lot. And I would also get some really strong bites as well. But it makes sense if they were spending a large part of their time looking down, interested in whatever it was that was down there. So I'm still not real sure what it was they were keyed in on. And if you have any thoughts on this or any ideas or maybe know exactly what they were looking for, go ahead and drop a comment down below. And hey, if you would like to watch a video that talks about 
contrasting color and how it can really help us when our lures stand out from the background go ahead and check this one out right here and make sure that you go out and encourage someone today you never know how you might just change their life for the bass fishing life i'm your host steve rogers